Welcome to Collecting Nostalgia. The show where we profile collectors. Today on Collecting Nostalgia, we are going to profile a fantastic- What fanta are you doing in our house? What is that abomination in your hand? This is a battle baby. A battle baby. This is a creation of our collector, Brad Rader. Hmm. So we're gonna see stuff like that in his house? All over his house. I can't wait. Let's, Let's take go. a look. There's a hundred reasons why I collect. I guess I collect because it's it's beautiful to me, because it's it's fun. I mean, the word nostalgia, I don't know, it makes you happy, it makes you think of being a kid. I think that's if you really care about something, it's something you never completely put behind you. My wife likes to collect, so I like to collect with her. And I mean, you know, she gets as excited, if not more so excited, about half the things we find. And you never know what you're gonna find. We love knockoff stuff more than just about anything. Things that, you know, people were trying to catch some of the He-Man money or some of the Transformers money or some of the G those things. Like the things that are kind of, and probably more focused on the He-Man knockoffs because they're so, they're the same thing, but they're also different and so poorly done. But years later, they're almost more beautiful than the He-Man figures themselves. I make battle babies or anything we get. It's really, there's one word and it's happy. That's the only word I want people to feel. I, I want the art that I do to be different and I want it to be its own thing, but I, I don't, I'm not going for just subversive and I'm not going for just shock. I want you to look at it and smile. I guess some people can look at collecting as being an unhealthy thing, but in the three years that since I started the Superpowers Collection and our collecting became more streamlined and more focused, Everything has changed for us. Physically, we eat better. We're happier people. We're more positive people. We're bringing people into our lives that matter more and building those relationships just like we would build our collection. I don't know. And it wasn't intentional. It just kind of happened. Shit, collecting has changed everything for the better. When my wife and I met, I was very afraid <laughs> of bringing... I didn't, I didn't have a huge collection, but I had stuff. I'm like, when you come to my home... Please don't be weirded out by the fact that there's a Captain Lou Albano figure beside a stormtrooper. And, you know, there, I have a lot of things. And she saw it and was immediately like, this stuff is really neat. I like this stuff. And then that immediately took her back to when she was young, her uncle would buy her just anything. And he had lots of stuff like this. And it, I don't know, it just kind of came together. When I was a kid, um, my uncle was very much into pop culture. He was really one of the catalysts for getting me into comics and just all kinds of different things. And um, it just really kind of started from there and he was a big influence on me. He also bought me Princess of Power for Christmas. <laughs> so that was one of the things that I collected as a kid. Um, but girl toys, not as cool as boy toys, especially in the 80s. So that was one of the things that I always kind of carried with me um, into adulthood. And then when Brad and I met, um, you know, he had a small collection and it just sort of fueled something for me. Like, I really just want to have those toys back in my life, the things that I didn't really have when I was a kid, but that I played with. And, um, you know, just seeing the art in them and, and knowing some of the backstories. Like, I know when Brad was collecting the superpower stuff and reading all of that backstory about how they came to be and some of the sculpting and just realizing the process that goes into what, a, what is on the shelves um, at the store just made me want to have those things in my home. I'm a huge fan of skulls or skeleton kind of toys. Like Skeletor was always my favorite He-Man toy. You know, just anything that, that has to do with the skull. This little guy is Death Floor, and he is, I guess, a knockoff of a knockoff. I don't even know what company makes it, but it's a line called Speclatron. And it was one of those things that you see pictures of on the internet, and you're like, oh, that's something I will never own, because I know they're incredibly hard to find. Um, but we were at a, an indoor flea market, and Brad was looking through toys. And, of course, now with Battle Babies, we're always looking for parts. And this guy was at the bottom of the thing in two pieces. Actually, he had masking tape around one, so I guess they tried to tape him back together. It was just something that I never thought I would own. And 
when I put pictures up on Instagram, people were instantly like, I want that. How much do you want for it? And it's like, oh, I'm not selling it. It's mine. <laughs> I have a very uh, hard life. I go out and my wife wants to buy dinosaurs and Motu figures and she wants to, she's like, you know, hey, honey, look at this superhero thing and oh, look at the new comic. It's my life's really, it's frustrating sometimes how hard things are for me. Like I get very, I get very angry at all of the stuff that I have to put up with having a wife that likes things that are awesome. And you know, it's, it's hard, it's a hard life, but you know, that's what love is, is it's compromise and sacrifice. <laughs> you know, he was lucky enough to find somebody that likes robot dinosaurs and monsters <laughs> and superheroes. And I mean, I think we have some, well, not really difference, because I think the superpowers is a good example. That's really his thing. I mean, when he first approached the idea of, I want to put this giant yellow rectangle in the living room, I was a little skeptical. But once we got it in here, I, it looks good and... I think it meshes with everything, I mean, as well as you can mesh with comics on the wall and Shonen I think, Warriors. I think and it's probably the most, the only reason that it stands out is it's the only thing that's as uniformed. This is Grenade Baby here and Missilesaurus because he has missiles. We went to a flea market about two years ago, a little over two years ago now, I guess, and there was a bag, just like guys selling, it was an outdoor flea market, and... This guy had like multiple Ziploc, filthy Ziploc bags, just grimy, like you didn't want to even touch them, they were so dirty. But one caught my eye and it was a brontosaurus from the 60s and you know it's from the 60s because they demonized it and made him give him mean teeth and an angry eye because you know brontosauruses love to eat and kill people. It's a monster face. A baby and a grenade and these ravage missile like things from a, and I just, the fire I added later, but it was like 50 cents for the bag. And most people would think spending 50 cents on that was ridiculous, but I just thought those things being in the same bag together was just neat. So I bought them, took them home. She loved the dinosaur, she loves dinosaur toys, like old 60s dinosaurs. So I started thinking, maybe I could glue it together. And she was like, leave that thing alone. I like that thing. <laughs> it's my dinosaur. Don't screw with it. Don't, it's mine. She fell asleep on the couch, took a nap. And while she was asleep, I glued it all together. And she woke up and was like, why did you do? That's pretty cute. Yeah, I was and mad then, at first. But but then she liked it. And so that sits there for a month. It's just something that we've put on the table. And we go to another flea market about a month later, and she finds a bag of 30 babies, like all kinds of vintage, like cake toppers and stuff, and all each like so creepy. Each one was so creepy in its own way and funny looking and so She's like, you could maybe make some more of those things. And I was like, well, I hadn't had any thought of doing that, but okay. So I went and found some cheap dollar store animals and started making some more. I made about eight or 10 more, put some pictures on Facebook. And this guy from a website, which is like the best website in the world for toys, uh, called weirdotoys.com, Justin Gammon, he calls me up, asks me, contacts me. He's like, how do I buy these? And I'm like, well, I hadn't even buy these like I hadn't that hadn't crossed my mind and I don't know it's 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 a thing somehow it's become a thing <laughs> I don't really know how to explain it and it's it's still weird being called an artist I mean I guess that maybe I am but it's it's weird to me to think of myself that way because it's just it's fun he'll see one thing um, and this is what I love about him he'll just become become fixated on that one thing and he'll put 15 babies together and they'll all be kind of lying on the, the top of the workbench. And the, some of them he makes immediately. If he's got a concept and he just runs with it. Others may sit there for a couple months before he finds the perfect thing that they go with. Putting helmets on babies, I animals. think that's, that's the whole reason he does this. That's is the to best put helmets part. on babies. I do it to make me laugh and I hope that other people will laugh at it. But if I, I always say if I make something that at the end, I just am enamored with and I have to hold and laugh at, then I've, that's why I do it. That's my process. The Raiders have a great collection. Their collecting got them thinking about creating, and thus, the Battle Babies were created. Of course, Brad and Stacy aren't the only people making great independent toy lines. 
there are lots of artists, such as Brandon Barker, who is making his knockoff throwback line, Warlords of War. Many of these independent lines have been influenced by many of the toys that many of us grew up with. For instance, do you remember Muscle Men? Of course you remember Muscle Men. October Toys has released their throwback line, OMFG. Of course, it revels in the minifigures of yesteryear. On the other spectrum of independent toys, there's Onel Design, uh, who created the Glio system. While it's a small operation, this system of interchangeable action figures and toys uh, has really caught on. Uh, so much so that the Glio system is being used by many other companies to make their own toys. Plus, these guys are just really cool. You can do so much with these guys. So if the toy aisles are beginning to bore you, be sure to check out some of these wonderful creations made by these great creators. I guarantee you won't be sorry. All right, so Brad, this is the collection that we've been talking about. This is the um, superpowers display that you created. What's, what's your favorite piece? If you had to pick one of these that was your favorite, can you do that? Robin, really? Every time. Why, why Robin? I like the color. I like that he has the chopping hand. I'm a big Dick Grayson fan. I, like, I just like the idea of Robin being that, you know, he was created specifically for kids to feel like they could be a part of the story. One of the things about, about these uh, figures is, is the accessories and vehicles that they make. This is, t tell me again what this is called? It's called the Justice Jogger. The Justice Jogger. This, and this, who, who rides in this? this well, is, they boxed it the, with the boxes, the boxes down, down here. here. They this packaged it. Superman is on the front of the Justice Jogger. It was originally made for like Aquaman or Green Arrow. It was made for the heroes that weren't real superpowers. Super <laughs> this one cracks me up, the Supermobile. Why does Superman need And this is for Superman. It is it for, has, it literally, has the logo right on the front no there. There's no way to talk your way yeah. around that. <laughs> so, and you know. Uh, that way he can punch. Yeah. Hold on, can I wind it up? Uh, you've got the, the Mego though, the uh, the bigger line. I, yes. I love this, the, the Iron Man, because he's like smiling. Yeah. And, uh, they, they, some of these were just kind of goofy. Uh, <laughs> you see those, the look there on, on his face. But that, that's how they all were. And which, what's your favorite one? Right now, I think Conan is my favorite. Conan, I like Conan. Okay, and this is Nixon as the uh, uh, Blue Lagoon monster. The creature from the, creature the, creature Black, from Lagoon. the Black Lagoon. Black yeah. Lagoon monster. So the naked monster running around yeah. on an island there by himself. Yeah. <laughs> I know you, you love Transformers from when you were a kid. They were something that was important to you. Why do you like the Dinobots so much? I like them because, well, A, they're dinosaurs. And the robots, that's awesome. But the other thing is that even in all the Transformers stuff, even with all the, com besides, I guess, the exception of like the Constructicons, these all basically have the same color scheme. And again, any chance to get a toy that's shiny, mm -hmm. I love that. Right, so you like shiny things. I do. <laughs> that's kind of crazy sounding. <laughs> so Jim works there, earrings, magic earrings. And uh, this was yours. This was. As this a, was as mine. A, as a kid, this is yeah, your gym. Yeah, I've had gym. this since I was probably eight or nine years old. So why is this is something that you've held on to? I, I always liked Jim. I don't know. I liked her better than Barbie. Um, she just, her, she her, had a cartoon and her story right. was very interesting and she was a rock star. It was just, she had pink hair, which <laughs> I thought was cool. So, yeah, I don't know. I just always kind of hung on to Jim. The only Barbie I kept was my... 80s astronaut Barbie. <laughs> All right, so these are the battle babies. This is what I see when I close my eyes. <laughs> no, it's, it's battle babies. They're, they're babies, and they have found ways to battle each other <laughs> through science, like Professor Tiger Brain, who's a new battle baby and will soon be in the Etsy shop or in someone's hands that buys him before he can go to the Etsy shop, <laughs> or like this guy who's just simply flying a cow with a Gatling gun. So these are mostly, they're all kind of um, babies and animals. Yep, that's kind of the way that I've went, decided to go. There's no real reason for that. There is no animal in this new piece though. Now this piece is cool. This was inspired by 
Bruticus. By Bruticus uh, of the Transformers. So you can see uh, this guy is a combiner, baby. Mm -hmm. And that's Bruticus, who is a very uh, well-known uh, combiner. And uh, you've got lots of parts here. I mean, parts I recognize. There's Weapon X's mm -hmm. uh, helmet. This is a uh, GoBot. A GoBot. Copter. Coptor. Coptor. Um, just different the pieces. The hands are Marvel Legends uh, War Machine. And you just you just see this. I see the world like Tetris. When I see things, I want to put them together and pack them and store them and make them fit. And I love this one, too. Piggy Tank is one of my favorites. Tell me what this is. This came out when? In the 80s? Early 80s, mid 80s, called Rocks, Bugs, and Things. Yeah. And of course, this is mine from when I was a kid. Right. And you can see here that it was broken, and I can right. just I cannot find the other half. Of right. His hand, sure. But he would be a rock, and now I'm not a rock. And I'm then a bug would come by, and, and whoa, he I've would been eating. Scoop him up into his mouth. It doesn't seem like a kid toy for a child, but he's a speed eater. We got him at Heroes Con last year, and he has a sword and a gun, just like Superman would need. Yep. This is Oscar Goldman. This is the six million dollar man's boss. Um, he is what well, Brad describes as the most boring toy ever. The most boring toy in the world. Now why? Yeah. Why is he boring? What makes him boring? I don't look, know. Look at him. He's wearing loafers and he has khaki pants. He's got a turtleneck on. Yeah. And he's worried about the big account. He's worried, and that's his that's his action. He's worried. Worry action. Unlike. Now get him out of here, he's so boring. All right, <laughs> unlike this guy who does this. Ugh. I didn't see how we get his blood pumping. Get his in blood back. pumping. In his back? Yeah. You getting that, Adam? All right, and then this happens too. Blah! <laughs> Memory disc fall out of his face. Action toys made by people on drugs. He looks like uh, Harley Quinn's gay father. Yes! We have a Corandi, and that's uh, basically a, a mash of Randy and what? Commandy. Commandy. His name is Commandy? Yes, that's the figure. It's a DC Classics Commandy. Okay. That has been mullet-fied and mustachioed <laughs> to resemble the guy that used to hang out at the convenience store named Frosty. That's not healthy, Brad. Hmm? That's not healthy. Huh? Let's not do that. No, no, uh, no, no, no. Uh, no. No, Brad. No. It won't. It works really well. It's high, it's, they made things really well back then in 1597. And that one pees. I pity the fool that thinks I've run with the crib. Why was that deemed tough in 1985, looking like a bat? Because, How is that scary? Because this guy is this big. Are you going to make fun of his clothes? Uh, yeah, he's like a foot tall. Of course we're going to make fun of his clothes. Well, well. We? I, like, I like his crazy swashbuckler belt. I don't remember Mr. T ever wearing a belt like this. I remember having a bandana flying out of the side. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, look at this. Like the judge. I think like they the got judge. him mixed up with Punky Brewster. This is, of course, the Yeti. You may have thought it was Keith Green or a member of the Bee Gees, but it's actually the Yeti, and uh, it comes with an action feature, and the action feature is... Did you know this is my child? It's okay. Daddy's here. Shh. Can you zoom in on this? I want you to really zoom in on the, that, how excited this child is inside this abomination. Hey, Brad, what'd you do to his genitals? That baby has no genitalia. Brad, if you could just give us a quick overview of uh, what seems to be your workstation. We're getting a closer look at it right now. And if you, uh, if you could kindly kind of fill us in about what goes on, how, how this comes to be, how you get these pieces and, and what goes into making a, a battle baby up close like this. 
Well, I don't want to simplify what I do too much, but I will reach into my, I will find a baby. Let's see what we got. Boom. It's a baby. Great. This is actually what Sarge is. And then I will say, Sarge needs this. And Sarge needs this. And he doesn't need that one. There's another <laughs> one. Here's another one. Here's another helmet. Boom. And now he's on a pterodactyl. Yes. And the pterodactyl needs this. Yes. And we have a battle baby. And it's not that simple. Yeah. There's a little but, more to it. But, but let's not simplify it. There's a battle baby in under 30 seconds, ladies and gentlemen. But don't think it's simple. You guys just keep looking out for battle babies. You guys have, have been written up many times. Many times over. Many times over and many more. So this is where the magic and the mayhem happens. Check it out on Etsy. What is your holy grail? It's a knockoff wrestling line called Madison Wrestlers from the 80s. And it's a luchador looking guy with a black shirt that says devil on it. And it's, who knows what it's worth, if it's worth anything, but it's something that, because I don't think I'll ever find it, it's my grail. It's like I, I'm always looking for it. I'm always asking about it, but I'll never find it. But maybe I will now. Madison Wrestlers. Devil, give it. <laughs> um, mine is Migo Nubia. Um, when the 12 inch line they did, um, the only villain they did in the, the Wonder Woman line was Nubia. And she's an African American. She's out there, um, but she's expensive. So it's one of those things that I'll get to eventually. But she's the one thing that I don't have that I really want. If, if you weren't collecting, where? Would your energy go? Where would you be taking that the energy that you're pouring into this hobby? What would you be doing? I don't know. I guess I'd read more books. I already know. My dream, my one dream, but it's, I don't know the, the logistics of it. I've not really fleshed it all the way out, but I want to start a, a swamp boat knife fight league. It's like you, we're both people standing on Swamp boats, full speed, through a marsh, and I mean, it's they're reaching over the gap. I mean, I, I don't have it worked out, but I mean, I know that's what I want to do, and I'm pretty sure that someday I'll just sell all this stuff and fund that. Considering everyone's safe, everything is A-OK, -okay, there was a fire, a flood, something bad happened, what would you run into that fire to save? I would save um, my talking Pee Wee Herman doll because it was my uncle's and he's no longer with us. And he really inspired a lot of what I like today and my love of pop culture, my love of comics. Um, really, I like to think that if he walked through that door, um, he would be excited at what he saw. Um, so I miss him a lot and that's one of the few things I have that was actually his. Well, I'm about to cry, so. I want to say Dinobots, and I want to say the Batman, Mego, and Robin and the Batcopter, but, you know, I don't know anymore. I just, I'd probably save that thing for her because it matters that much to her. That's all that matters. Thank you for joining us on another episode of Collecting Nostalgia. We had a great time with the Raiders. We hope to be back soon. We hope you guys had a good time, too. And if you would like to be on Collecting Nostalgia, let us know. We would love to profile you. Until next time, I'm Ashley. And I'm Lucas. And we'll see you later. Bye. There be, this be like audio in this machine. <laughs> Just don't tweak the nipple. So it's basically glittery chest. Yeah. Is that what you like in your men? Well, in my skeleton themed villains, yes, glitter. All by myself All by myself Yeah, don't put his hands no, in his pants. Like, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. No, I will not take you or your friends to prom. I can't afford a limousine that big. How stupid. That was so stupid. <laughs>